Welcome, dear friends, to this service for Sunday, the 22nd of October, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And I do pray that we will all be blessed as we spend this time together in the presence of God. Looking at the parish this coming week, the birthdays, today the 22nd, Monique Galliers and Riodan Naidu, the 23rd of October, Les Hensley and Loisi Corza, the 27th of October, Philip Whitfield, and the 28th of October, Maureen Beck. We do wish you all a very happy birthday and pray that the year ahead will be truly blessed. Anniversaries on the 24th of October, Brian and Leslie Dengler celebrate their wedding anniversary. Congratulations, and we do pray that there would be many more to come.
The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Collects. Holy God, you govern all things in heaven and on earth. Enable us to be obedient to your authority, that serving you in the world we will be faithful witnesses of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, Is it true that you have told me to lead these people to that land, but you did not tell me whom you would send with me? You have said that you know me well and are pleased with me. Now if you are, Tell me your plans, so that I may serve you and continue to please you. Remember also that you have chosen this nation to be your own. The Lord said, I will go with you, and I will give you victory. Moses replied, If you do not go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you are pleased with your people? and with me, if you do not go with us. Your presence with us will distinguish us from any other people on earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do just as you have asked. 
because I know you very well, and I am pleased with you. Then Moses requested, Please let me see the dazzling light of your presence. The Lord answered, I will make all my splendor pass before you in your presence, and I will pronounce my sacred name. I am the Lord, and I show compassion and pity on those I choose. I will not let you see my face, because no one can see me and stay alive. But here is a place beside me where you can stand on a rock. When the dazzling light of my presence passes by, I will put you in an opening in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you will see my back, but not my face. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 99 The Lord is King, let the nations tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, He is high above all nations. Let them praise your great and terrible name, for holy is the Lord. The Mighty One is King and loves justice. You have established equity. You have dealt righteousness and justice in Jacob. O oh, exalt the Lord our God, and bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept to his teachings and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God, you were a forgiving God to them, and pardoned their wrongdoing. O exalt the Lord our God, and bow down towards his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of our you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by the love, and your endurance inspired by the hope of our, in our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers loved by God, we know that He has chosen you, because the gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know how He lived among you for your sake, you became imitators of us and of the Lord, in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit, and you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Machaea. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you, how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. The good news is proclaimed in the 22nd chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at verse 15. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Then the Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. Then they sent to him some of their disciples and some members of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what others think because you pay no attention to anyone's status. 
Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it against the law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus, however, was aware of their evil plan, and so he said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin, and he asked them, Whose face and name are these? The emperors, they answered. So Jesus said to them, Well, then, pay the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. I think it's safe to say that among the classic board games, few have more potential to inflame the passions of its players than Monopoly. If you've ever gathered around with family or friends after dinner to play the game, you might know all too well how a good-natured process of buying and building and passing go, sometimes trying to get out of jail free, can sometimes give way to bravado and hostility as the evening wears on. For whatever reason, the lure of those fistfuls of fake money can drive even the most congenial temperaments into a competitive frenzy. I remember back to my childhood where a game of Monopoly in our family always followed a certain path. Firstly, my mom would refuse to play, wise as she was, because she knew how it would end every time. My dad always got so frustrated with my brother who, as a child, didn't quite understand the concept of assets above cash. No, cash was not king in my dad's business mind. As a born salesman who believed in taking chances and maximizing your return on investment, he couldn't quite understand my eight-year-old brother's desire to have the biggest pile of money and no little red hotels or yellow houses. Oh, actually, our fights would start before the first dice was before the dice was even thrown for the first time to see who'd start. We would start by fighting who would have which little object. Was it going to be the top hat or the iron or the dog? That's where our fighting would begin. This should always have been a warning as to how the game would go. But only my mom seemed to have that wisdom. This family strife, not just ours, but in, in, in all families, is so common a problem, in fact, that the manufacturer of the game once set up a helpline during the Christmas holiday to try and reduce the number of family fights that inevitably erupt over rule disputes. So much for peace and goodwill towards all people on Christmas Day. And now if you blanch at the thought of the Christ child bearing witness to squabbles over fake real estate empires, though today's gospel might reassure you that Jesus has been dealing with tricky questions about money for a very long time. And it seems that he is largely unfazed by them. Are we to conclude then that Jesus is indecisive about exploitative economic systems, or that he urges some sort of spiritualized detachment from material concerns? The short answer to both these questions is no. But it is worth examining why this is the case. So now the Pharisees, in asking Jesus this question about paying taxes to the emperor, are not genuinely seeking wisdom about the tension between spiritual and temporal authorities. They are simply trying to entrap him in an unwinnable game. They know that if Jesus says, no, you should not pay taxes to the emperor, he will be arrested by the imperial authorities and the Herodians that were there in, in the crowd that day. And yet, if he says, yes, you should pay him, he will appear to side with the empire against his own people. Either way, the Pharisees see an opportunity to knock him off the board, as it were. What they don't anticipate, however, is that Jesus is not interested in winning the game that they are playing. He is coming into their midst 
with entirely new rules of play. Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's, he says, holding up a coin with the image of Augustus on it. Is this the game that you are playing, he seems to be saying? Then you already know what the rules are. But know also that God is not subject to your strategies. God is not one among many to whom you might choose to pay out a portion of your allegiances. God is not interested in your coins, but in your conscience, in your compassion, and your complicity with the empires of this world. And no, God has not come to win the game you are playing, to, mon to monopolize your systems of control. God has come to show you a new way of being, in which there are more than enough resources for all. Now, what could the Pharisees say? Whether out of shock or puzzlement, they don't say anything, and they go on their way. Whatever rule book Jesus is playing by is not the one they were expecting. Far from being uninterested in the matter at hand, Jesus reveals in his answer that the only way out of the dynamics that divide and oppress is to stop assuming that such a game can ever be won on its own terms. Whether one is an enemy of the empire or the agent of empire, the empire is still the word on everyone's lips. It is still the model that captivates everyone's imagination. And Jesus invites people to start speaking of and imagining the kingdom of heaven instead. He invites us to conceive of a kingdom whose economics and ethics look radically different from anything dreamed up by Caesar. Where you don't need to hoard properties, because God's is a house with many dwellings. And you don't need a get-out-of-jail-free card, because all of the bars in God's dwelling place have been broken open. Can we begin to dream of such a place? Can we write new rules that more closely reflect, reflect the world of which Jesus speaks? It is vital that we do, not just to avoid fights on family game nights, but because the entirety of creation is groaning under the weight of history's endless jockeying for supremacy, its endless extraction of the earth's gifts, and its endless striving to make gods out of coins. And the only way any of that will change is if we begin to change. If our hearts and our minds and in turn our systems and social contracts begin to look less like empire and more like communities that protect the vulnerable and that steward the fragile ecosystems we call home. But as long as we fight against one another in our current mode, the ruler of this world will continue to collect payment, and we've already seen the results that will bring about. So no, Jesus is not an advocate of the separation of church and state, nor is he one who finds economics too corrupt for consideration. He is instead the one who has come to infuse with his spirit our discernment of the complex terms of our common life. He is the one who has revealed that the one necessary rule is simply to love God and to love our neighbors. And the, th and the fact that we haven't yet managed to fully abi abide by that rule does, does not make us or him a loser. On the contrary, despite the best efforts of all the Caesars of this world to silence or co-opt the game, we still proclaim that empire is not the only way. We still haven't forgotten that another world is coming. And that is a victory bigger than any game of Monopoly, or any Monopoly. You might wonder then, if Jesus was not here to play by that old set of rules, what was he playing at in the end? What board game was he inviting us to instead? Maybe you'll come up with your own creative answer, but here's one to ponder. I'm not sure if any of you know that game called Operation where you have to use tweezers to delicately, delicately extract the broken bones and ailing organs from the body of a sick person without hitting the edges of the board. The one where winning looks like a person restored to fullness of health. Well, 
Yes, Jesus was really good at that game, and he probably wanted us to be skilled at it too. Because if winning looks anything like anything in the kingdom of God, surely it looks something like that. Wounds healed, fractures mended, and power demonstrated by tenderness. Now what a wonderful game night it would make. What a wonderful world it would be. Shalom. Let us pray. O oh Jesus, you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of lords and King of kings. And we pray that your kingdom will reign forever in our hearts and in this world. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come here now, bringing a kingdom of justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy, and grace for all. Lord, we ask that you rule in our hearts, lead in this world, and govern over your kingdom. But Lord, honestly, we often have our own plans and agendas, and we want to be rulers of our world. Forgive us for those times. And Lord, we live in a time that we would rather idolize the King of Pop than worship you. Help us to know how to live as your kingdom people in these times. And Lord, there are a lot of kings in this world who terrorize, overtax, humiliate, overexploit, and abuse those they are to lead. Help us to spread the good news of the different kind of king you are. Lord, thank you for being a different kind of king. Thank you for your goodness and kindness in our lives. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kingdom that is unlike any kingdom in this world. Amen. We come now to the celebration of the Sacrament of the Holy Eucharist.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us now and always. Amen. So dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
take me home.